Okay, hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you for joining me, for those of you who are. Uh, we will be looking at today identifying transformations um, that have been applied to some equations. So, change my brush size. So we are identifying transformations applied. Okay, so what this essentially means is we're given two equations. Okay, a starting equation and an ending equation. We need to identify the transformation that applied to go from the starting to the end. So for example, we might be told we have y equals x squared is our base function. And then we are transforming that to say y equals to x squared plus three. Let me fix that up. x squared plus three, something like that, okay? And we need to find out what transformations would achieve that, okay? What are the transformations that will achieve that? And we're going to look at both uh, the dash method and using inspection. Okay? So first off, okay, uh, so our dash slash inspection, both of them start with uh, the same step, okay, which I'll call similarities. Both of them start with similarities. So what is that? Uh, that is our first step is we have to rearrange the equations so that the operations are only applied to the X or Y. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So we need to rearrange Okay. So what does that look like? That is, uh, we need to make it so that there is nothing, and I'll say for lack of a better term, outside uh, squared terms, square roots, okay? Or if the uh, coefficient, is in the numerator. And this will make much more sense when I show you in a second. Or if the coefficient is in the numerator, if the variable is in the denominator. Okay, so a couple of examples what I mean by this. And this is set up. This is, it doesn't matter if the dash method or the inspection method, we have to do this set up at the start. No questions asked, we have to do this. It makes life so much, much, much easier. You could, if you're really, really, really good at the inspection method, get away with not doing this, but I highly suggest you do do this anyway. It just makes life a lot easier. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so y equals one on x plus three, uh, y equals two x minus two all squared, and y equals two x squared plus three. Okay, so applying something directly, we can only have operations that are applied directly to the x or the y value, okay? So let's look at this first one, y equals one on x plus three. This plus three is not applied directly to the x, okay? What I mean by that, it is, plus three to the whole fraction, okay? It's one on X plus three. If you, you can imagine reading this out. If you read this out and you have to say, 
uh, blah 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 something squared times by two well that means that it isn't applied directly to the item it's applied to the square or whatever it's outside okay so we need to rearrange this Okay, so it would look like y minus 3 equals 1 on x, okay? And if we read this, y minus 3, the minus 3 is applied directly to the y. If we read 1 on x, well, that's it's just the 1 on x. Okay, same thing over here in our second example, y equals 2, x minus 2, all squared. Okay, this 2 is not applied directly to the x. Okay, it is multiplied by the whole bracket squared. It is not being applied directly to the x value because we care about, if we think of transformations fundamentally what they are, a transformation is modifying our x or y coordinate. In this case, we are not modifying our x or y coordinate, we are modifying the square of something. Okay? So we need to change this to y on two equals x minus two all squared. Okay? Now the x minus two, that's fine because it's x minus a two the minus two, we're subtracting two from the x. It's directly applied to the x. Uh, this third one, this third one's a little bit harder. Okay, well not harder, it just takes another look. Y equals two times by x squared plus three. So it happens to be that this two and the plus three both aren't applied directly to the x squared because we could imagine it's the x squared then times by two then plus three. It's not directly applied. So we need to rearrange this so it's directly applied. So we get y minus 3 equals 2x squared. And then we get y minus 3 divided by 2 equals x squared. We've now got this written where operations are being written directly to the x or y values. Uh, I'll scroll down. So again, if you're copying down, this is a good point where you could pause yourself and then go at your own speed. So a couple more examples of this. We're going to do a bunch because this is a really important skill. So y equals 1 on x minus 1 all squared plus 2. y equals 2x squared plus 3 equals 1 on 3x plus 4. Now, if you want these six new ones, you could try yourselves. You could try yourselves to rearrange these, pause now, um, and then check how you went. Okay, so the plus two, this is not applied directly to the X, it's applied to the fraction, and it's outside the square as well, so it's a definite no-no, so this is Y minus two equals one on X minus one all squared. The minus one is fine, because it's applied directly to the X. Uh, this two, is not applied, so we get y on 2 equals x squared plus 3. And then we can say also this plus 3 is not directly applied to the x, it's x squared, then the 3 is being added. So that operator is not being applied directly, so we have to go y on 2 minus 3 equals x squared. <sighs> y equals 1 on 3x plus 4. So the plus 4 is not being applied directly to the x. So this is y minus 4 equals 1 on 3x. Now, is the 3 being applied directly to the x? Yes, it is. Okay, we could think of it where 3 times x, then we're turning into a fraction with 1 over the top of it. So that is fine. Uh, this one, y equals 5x minus 1 all squared. So this is y minus 6 equals 5x minus 1 all squared. And the rest of that's fine. We could read this over here on the right. We can read that as x multiplied by 5, then take away 1. That's all being applied directly to the x, and then that whole thing's squared. So that's completely fine. Uh, this question here is very similar to this one up here. Okay, the 2 is not being applied directly to the x, 
and the three is not being applied directly to the x. They're both outside the square. So we have y uh, minus three equals two x minus two. And then so we move the, and that's all squared, move the two, so we get y minus three on two equals x minus two, all squared. Okay. And then this last one, this last one is quite possibly the hardest. Okay. It's very obvious the minus 2 is not applied directly to the x. It's outside this fraction. It's being applied to the whole fraction. So we get y plus 2 equals 3 on 4x. Okay. Now, this is where this can really catch you out. This 3 is not being applied directly to the x. We could rewrite this to make it more obvious. We got 3 one on four x okay three in the numerator so this is going back to this situation up here or if the coefficient is in the numerator when i should change that to when the variable is in the denominator so our x is in the denominator we have a coefficient we have a three up in the numerator that three is not actually being applied directly to the x it is being applied to the fraction. That's just a shorthand way of writing it. So we get y plus two on three equals one on four x. So that's all the ways that we can rearrange. That's all the ways that we need to rearrange, okay? And this sets us up so that we can much, much easier identify the transformations that are applied. Okay? So I want you to go back to thinking we're dealing with this sort of situation. We're given a starting function. We're we aren't told the transformations, but we're given the end function. Okay, so what we're doing is imagining all of these that we've just gone through, they're all our end functions, and we're rearranging them to be able to better identify the transformation. So let's do some examples, okay, of actually finding. So we will do, Okay, we will do the dash method over here and we use inspection over here. Okay. Doesn't matter which one you're doing, the first step is going to be just as above. It's the exact same first step. Right here, let's say our question, example one, is we have some function y equals x squared, some transformations are applied to it. Okay, we apply some transformations and we get y equals two bracket x squared plus three. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is rearrange our function, our second function. The first one, that's fine. It's in normal looking form. We need to rearrange the second one so the operators are only applied to do directly the x or y. So our second one we can rewrite as, and I'll just put a note here, we are rearranging. And I'll call it two, one, two. So we get y on two equals x squared plus three. So we get y on two minus three equals x squared. And just quickly, I'll put a big fat arrow over here that we would do the same here. And we'll come back to that. Okay, so we've done that. Step two, okay, we need to rewrite, rewrite our second, okay, and always our second, whatever we're transforming into, rewrite our second equation in terms of x dash and y dash. So it's just switching the x and the y for x dash and y dash. So we get y dash on to uh, minus three equals x dash all squared. So we're there. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, and from that, okay, if we think to our transformations, we started with one and two, okay, we can say this is equivalent. If I write equation one just underneath it, we've started with y equals x squared, and we've now got y dash on two minus three, and x dash all squared, okay. Just like before, okay, thinking of the other methods when we were given the transformations, we can say y dash on two minus three is equal to y, and we have x dash is equal to x, okay? We're just equating the sides of the equation. We're just make, equating them. Equate equations. Okay, so the dash method, when we first do it, it takes a while, it takes a while. So I'm going to change some color here so we better identify. These stars are telling us what our steps are. And now we're going to rearrange again to make uh, y dash and x dash the subject, okay? Which pretty much means get the dash dashes by themselves. So rearranging to get the dashes by themselves or make them the subject. So we get y dash on two equals y plus three. We get y dash equals two y plus three. And over here, we just have x dash equals x. So what does this mean? This is, this is the whole process. We've been trying to get this. This is critical, okay? What do these two things tell us? Okay, this tells us our if we started with our original y value, we've then added three to it, we've then multiplied by two, and that is giving us a y dash. Okay, these two equations are telling us the transformations. telling us the transformations and we can just read off. So the final step, okay, is read off transformations. Now, uh, as long as you read all of one side together and then read all of another side together, then your order will be fine. It might be reading off what's happening to the X to turn into X dash, or you're reading off the Y, what turns into Y dash. Uh, you just pick, pick one of the boxes, do that first, write all those transformations down. Then you pick the second box, read that off and write all the transformations down. Okay, so in this case, there's nothing done to the X. So we're just reading off what, what is being done to our original Y value to turn it into Y dash. So the first thing done to it, and we just, we effectively follow order of operations in this side. This is why the dash method is handy, because it's at this stage, it's really easy to write, read off, okay? So our first transformation, number one, is we, uh, we're we doing y plus three, okay? So that is literally just a translation, okay? In the pos uh, y axis, of uh, three. Okay. And then we are multiplying all the y values by two. So a little bit of interpretation comes in. What happens if we're multiplying all the y values by two? Well, we know that that means we are dilating by a factor of two from the x-axis. Now, I'm not going to go over why it's from the x-axis. That's from previous sections. You should know how, why that's occurring. Okay. If we multiply the values of two, uh, y values by value two, we're stretching away from the x-axis. So that's it. All of that work, we've just identified the, true tra the two 
transformations that we'd have to do to turn y equals x squared into y equals 2 x squared plus 3. And we've identified the order as well. So in this, okay, order is important. So that's the dash method. A lot of working out, especially with the notes there in blue of what the steps are, but once you do it a couple of times, it becomes a lot more compressed. So inspection, we've done the same first step. Okay, same first step. So we've ended up with y on two minus three equals x squared. So the way we think of this, okay, or my steps or what I would encourage is we uh, write it as a flow system of transformations. Okay, what I mean by flow system is a story. Okay, you pretty much, you almost, it's using intuition. It's not quite guess and check. We are using intuition and recognition to look at the starting point, look at the end point and go, okay, what are the changes I need to do to go there? So our step is uh, our starting equation. Okay, so we've got y equals x squared. Actually, I'm gonna move this over. Okay, and we put down our ending. Now I know this only takes two transformations. Okay, and we know that from the from the previous method that it's just applying two transformations. Uh, but looking at it, you can go well. Sort of how many coefficients are there or operators are there? Well, there's the two and the three, so I'm going to assume that there's two transformations. Okay? And I write down my ending. Okay? Or we won't won't actually write it down just yet. So we're looking at y equals x squared. How am I trying to turn it into y on two minus three equals x squared? And we're thinking about uh, inspection rules or inspection shortcuts. So if, uh, for example, replacing an x with x minus one, or replacing a y with y on two is a dilation, or replacing an x with negative x that's a reflection thinking of those what are those rules or shortcuts that i can apply okay what can i apply to this to get it closer to this so my first one would be and thinking of sense and order of operations is i'm going to replace y with y minus three Okay, which is a vertical translation. So I can now write it as that color? y minus three equals x squared. Okay, now how do I turn y minus three into y on two minus three? Well, I could do that with the rule replace y with y on two and so now i put the y on two in in place of the y and i've got my final equation so this is really where there's a whole bunch of background knowledge required to do the inspection so you need to go back and look at uh, some of the other notes that we've done what are all the rules for inspection transformations so I've applied those and yep, I've got my final equation. Okay. So now I'm gonna look at those notes I've written down on the right hand side and go, well, what do those actually mean as transformations? Well, if I replaced y with y on three, I have a, um, if I can get my brain to work for a second. Okay. I've translated positive y axis three units okay. and then replacing y on, with y on two that actually means i have dilated by factor of two 
from x axis. And if we compare those, so translate positive y axis three units and dilate by a factor of two from the x axis, that is the exact same. Okay, we've gotten the exact two same transformations. So I can write it as a whole thing again. Translate um, in the positive y axis three units, then dilated by a factor of two from the x axis. So we have that. Also, so you know, I can see the live chat. So if you're really curious about anything or it's, this stream isn't coming through properly, then you can type in the chat and let me know. So that's the two ways of doing it, dash method or inspection. So the dash method has several steps, okay? A process to it, okay? With the goal of getting y dash equals something and x dash equals something because once we have that once we have this goal here and the goal here we can just read off the transformations that's the whole purpose of the dash method okay. using inspection is thinking okay what's the story what's the story i can tell to convert equation one into equation two thinking of the shortcuts that are um, the inspection method inspection transformations. Okay, let's see how much space I have. Yes, I have enough space. I can fit in another one. Okay. I'll do two more. You can leave now if you want, um, come back to them at a later stage. I'll do two more. The first one of these next two is a bit simpler. This, or uh, about the same difficulty as the one we've already done. And then the last one is really complex. It is the hardest type of transformation you'll get asked, okay? Because it's a multi, multi-step transformation. So let's go with, we will go with uh, converting y equals x cubed into y equals three x plus one all cubed minus five. Okay, what are the transformations? What are the transformations? So I'll do it the same way. Dash method, inspection method, and the starting step and I'll do it over in the dash side first. We need to rearrange y equals three x plus one all cubed minus five. So to get it, so we get y minus uh, plus five is equal to three x plus one all cubed. And then we get y plus five on three equals x plus one all cubed. So now that's in the correct format where all the operations are applied either directly to the X or directly to the Y. So that will be useful over here too. So I will uh, rewrite two in terms of x dash y dash okay and this is equation two because whatever we're going into okay whatever we're going into is our second one so we always whatever we're going into and this will be important for the next example that's what we always write in terms of x dash and y dash 
Okay, so we now actually have y dash plus five on three equals x dash plus one, all cubed. And that is equivalent to equation one, which was y equals x cubed. That was where we started. So we can say, okay, making equivalence, we can say that y is equal to y dash plus five on three, and we have x equals x dash plus one. Okay. Next step, rearrange to make x dash and y dash subject. So it follows on that we have 3y equals y dash plus 5. So we get y dash equals 3y minus 5. And we have uh, x dash equals x minus 1. Okay. So this is now telling us this was our whole goal. Like I said before, this is our whole goal. Okay. It is telling us, when we think of in terms of coordinates, it's telling us we start with our original y value, we do some operations to it, we get our new y dash value. We're starting with our original x, and it's telling us the operations required to get to our x dash. So it doesn't matter which one you read off first, but you need to read all the items off once off for once uh, equation, Okay, then read all the transformations off the other. So from this, we can quite easily see that we are multiplying y by 3, then we're subtracting 5. Okay. So the times by 3, what does that mean? Well, we are dilating uh, by a factor of 3 from x axis. Yeah, if we multiply all our y values of, from th by 3, we're stretching away from the x-axis. We are then subtracting 5, so that means we are translating 5 units in the negative y-axis direction. And then our last one Okay, the minus one, we are translating one unit in the negative x axis direction. Cool. So we can read those off. So that's using the dash method. You just, once you get it in terms of y dash equals 3y minus 5 and we get x dash x minus 1, we can read them off. Now for the inspection method, okay, we're starting with y equals x cubed okay and we're ending up with y plus 5 on 3 equals x plus 1 all cubed okay so what's the story what are the things that i can do to get there okay so thinking in terms of inspection Okay, so I can replace y with y on 3. Okay, and you'll see in a second 
why I'm replacing y with y on 3 first and not doing the plus 5. You'd think, oh, the plus 5, that's, that's next to it. But if you did it that order first, you'd actually end up with the wrong result. And so that's equal to x cubed. Then we're going to do another step. So in this case, I will uh, replace. I'm working on the left-hand side again. I'm going to replace y with y plus 5. So now I get y plus 5 on 3 because I'm directly replacing the y. So if I did it the wrong way, and I'll just I'll, I'm going to scribble I'm going to scribble the wrong way over here on the right, but then erase it. So you might not want to write it there. If I did the y with y plus five first, I'd end up with y plus five equals x cubed. And then if I did the replace y with y on three, I'd end up with y on three plus five equals x cubed. And that's not the same. These two, that's not the same format. Okay. So you have to be real critical using inspection. This is what I mean, it uses intuition. You have to look at equations, get a feel for them. Go, okay, which order do I need to properly do all these replaces in to get the correct format? Which is why the dash method's more precise. It doesn't require, or more useful is it doesn't require that intuition. So we've got x cubed. And then to get it to look like this, all I'd have to do is replace x with x plus 1. So we know the transformations. We know the intuition steps. Replace y with y on 3, then replace y with y plus 5, then replace x with x plus 1. Okay. So from that, we then need to think, okay, what do those actually mean in terms of transformation? We're replacing y with y from 3 is dilate by 3 from x axis. Oh, I've run out of pen space there. Okay, dilate by 3 from x axis, replace y with y plus 5, that is translate uh, five units negative direction of y axis. Okay. And then our last one, replace x with x plus y, that is translate one unit negative x axis direction. So dash method has some steps, but it's more straightforward. You get an equation, you just read. Okay. Oh, it's times by, th by three. That means it's dilate by three. Subtract five. That means it's translated negative five. X minus one. That means it's translated by negative one. Using the inspection method, you have to recognize there are uh, translation shortcuts, apply them using intuition, and then re also know what those shortcuts actually mean. So doing via inspection, personally, I find can be confusing unless you're really, really all over it. Right here, I will do this final, final hard challenge one. So I'll clear all of this and we'll do this final one. So question three, and we're going to identify the translations required uh, to change. And we're going to start with y equals three square root. Oh, no, done that wrong. 
3 square root 2 minus x into, and I'm going to add one to that, and we're going to convert it into y equals negative square root x plus 2. Okay, so we're starting with something uncommon and ending something uncommon. Now, you can, you can go straight from the left equation to the right equation. You can. Okay. But it is really, really, really hard, and even I don't like doing that. Really, really hard. So what we do instead is go into the standard form first because it's much more straightforward. Okay, so if it's a square root graph, we're going to go into the standard form of y equals root x, and then we're going to do more transformations and get it into the final form. So I will do I will do the uh, inspection uh, dash method first. Sorry, dash method first. Okay, so we will call. This equation one, we will call this equation two, and we'll call this equation three. So first things first, whatever we're going into using the dash method, okay, whatever we're going into, we write in terms of x dash, y dash, okay? So this is the one thing that's different with this, we're going back to this, okay, even though this is the more simple form, we need to, because that's what we're going into, we write that in terms of x dash and y dash. So we get y dash equals square root x dash. And then whatever we started with, we've got y equals, oh, I've skipped a step. I need to rearrange because, because equation one, uh, we need to rearrange one into, I, I would say, that standard form where operators are applied just to x or y, okay? Rearrange one, so we're going to get y minus one on three equals square root two minus x. So now we've got it in operators applied to uh, just x and y. And I might call this equation four now, which is just a version of equation one. We equate uh, four and one. So we can say that y dash is equal to y minus one on three, and we have x dash is equal to two minus x. And I'll write this as x dash equals negative x plus two. It'll make it a little bit easier. Now, the beautiful thing about this, the one advantage of going from a non-standard form into the base form or simple form, okay, is that we've now already got it written as y dash equals our original y, whole bunch of operations done. x dash equals our original x, whole bunch of operations done. So we can read off the transformation straight away. We don't need to rearrange these to get y dash and x dash by themselves because they've already got y dash and x dash by themselves. So in this longer one, I'm actually going to write out the full transformation arrow path. Okay. So for the y value, I need to, okay, if we're dilating uh, oh, read it order operation, so I do the y minus one first, so we get x comma y minus one. And then the next transformation I apply to that is, and this is the tricky thing, it's divide by three. So if we're dividing by three, that's the same as one third y minus one. So in this case, the dilation factor isn't three, it's actually a fraction. So, there's that. We can see that that is x comma y minus one on three. Do another operation, I might do it down here. 
So we get, now I'm reading the transformations applied to the X value. So that is, if I'm taking an X, so I need to turn into, I'm looking here and here. I need to turn my X slowly into negative X plus two. Well, how do I do that? Well, I make it negative X in the first step. And then I make it negative X plus two comma Y minus one on three. So if you're good at reading these flow diagrams, you can read off all the transformations at each step. And I'll just now highlight them in a different color. So we did Y minus one, then we did divide by three. Then we did negative X and then we did plus two. So we can read off all our transformations and there's a few here. There's four different transformations applied just to get it to this standard form. So we translate, and I'm just going to write in shorthand just to save all our time. So translate one unit negative Y axis. Uh, dilate by that's going to be dilate by factor one third from x axis. We're going to uh, reflect. Oh, and Tracy's just subscribed. Well done, Tracy. Thank you. Everyone should. Someone's said hello. Hello. Okay. okay, so now we're going to reflect about y axis and then we are going to uh, translate two units. Um, positive x axis. So I'm just reading off the transformations and that's, that's getting us. And this is the thing. This is a hard problem. This has gotten us to stay to equation two. Okay. Those four transformations get it so that we now have something that looks like that. We still now need to, Okay. We could almost think this is a two-part problem. Okay. We're going from one to two, and now we're going from two to three, still using the dash method. So we're starting again. We're starting at y equals root x, and we're going to, where are we ending up? y equals negative root x plus two. y equals negative root x plus two. Okay. So where we're going to, we rewrite in terms of y and x dash. So... We have y dash equals negative root x dash plus two. We need to rewrite that in terms of just operators applied to x and y. So we get y dash take away two equals negative root x dash. That negative sign is outside the root, so we need to move that. So we get negative y dash plus two equals root x. Okay, so now we can equate to the original, equate to starting point. So we have y equals negative y dash plus two, and we have x equals x dash. Uh, so we could say we start with x, oh, rearrange them to get x uh, x dash and y dash by themselves we get y plus 2 equals negative y dash and then we get y dash equals negative y minus 2 and x is equal to x dash so you can say well we're starting with x and y we can read off our transformations is going to be, we could say X and we turn into a negative Y 
and then we go x comma negative y minus two. So read off our transformations, we are reflecting for this stage here, step one, and then step two, step one, we are reflecting about x axis. And then step two, we are translating two units, negative y axis direction, okay? This here is short for negative, negative sign with VE, like negative, 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 <laughs> but yeah, it's negative. They translate to units negative y axis direction. Now, what have we got? What have we got? We have got this. And we have got all of this, okay? All these first transformations back up here, okay, the first set gets us to here. And then the second set of transformations take us up to this, okay? So your proper solution would write all of those first four transformations, then the second two transformations, if you read them all out, that would take from that all the way to that. So that was, that was the dash method, a lot of steps. And that's what I'm saying. This is by far the hardest question that you'll get. Okay, inspection method. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to go via y equals root x. So I'm going to write it, I've already got it the rearranged. I'm gonna use that again. Like I said, you rearrange it. So our starting point is y minus one on three equals root two minus x. Let's give me some space. Y minus one on three equals root two minus x. Okay, and I'm going to aim for, at some stage, I'm going to aim for y equals root x. And then after that, after some more transformations, I'm going to aim for okay. And I have to rearrange this one, what I'm aiming for. Here, where did I rearrange it? This. Rearrange it so the operators are only in terms of applied to y and x. So we get uh, negative y plus two equals root x. Yeah. So what are the things I need to do to get there? So in this case, I need to be doing replace, okay? And this is really weird when we're going backwards using inspection method. Uh, I'm actually going, because I want to get rid of the negative one, so I want to replace y with y plus one. Because if I replace y with y plus one, and I'll write it here quickly, I get y plus one minus one on three equals root two minus x, okay. So by replacing with the opposite, those cancel. So I'm left with y on three equals root two minus x. Now I'm gonna do another operation okay. and I'm gonna work on the y again. I'm going to replace y with 3y, okay. because I want to get rid of the 3, so to get it to cancel out, so I'm going to end up with y equals root 2 minus x. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to 
uh, replace x with negative x because okay. I need to get rid of the negative sign so I get y equals root 2 plus x okay. and then the final transformation I need to apply I need to get rid of the plus 2 so I'm going to replace x with x uh, minus 2 and that'll cancel out and that gets me to that stage. So I'm using all those inspection shortcuts, all the replace, replace Y with something, replace X with something. Okay. All the different types of inspection shortcuts. Now I need to aim for this. Okay, I've got y equals root x. Now I need to aim for negative y plus 2 equals root x. Okay. So I will, and this is where order is important. Okay, I need to think, okay, I need to apply the replacements in the correct order. And it's all on the side of y, so I'll be doing it to y. Do I replace y with y plus 2 first or do I replace y with negative y first? So I will replace y with y plus 2. So I get y plus 2 equals root x. And then to get the negative y, I would replace y with negative y. So we could do it that way. Another way we could do it, okay, and this is where order becomes, if I want to get the same order of over here, we could, we could go about this differently. Okay, if I take that away, what happens if I did yeah. And we'll note just quickly here that was a positive. What happens if I do replace with the negative y first? Uh, erase that. What happens if I replace y with the negative y first? So I'm aiming for, what was I aiming for? I was aiming for negative y plus 2 equals root x. What happens if I replaced y with negative y? negative y, so I get negative y equals root x. Hmm. Now the next step, I need to get y plus 2, but I have to be doing that by replacing y directly. And this is where, now that there's already a negative in front of it, I would have to replace y with y minus 2. Yeah, because if I substitute that in, I get negative y minus 2 equals root x, and that turns into negative y plus 2 equals root x, as required. And that's tricky. That's tricky to recognize. Okay, Going, oh, it's just a symbol. I just need a plus 2 there. But this whole idea of replacing y, we're directly replacing the y, or we're directly replacing the x. Uh, becomes tricky. Okay. So we figured out that's all the replacements we need to do. There is one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay. Okay. So now we need to go back and look at those replacements and actually read them as transformations. Read them as a transformation. So what's it going to be? Well, replace y with y plus one. That is translate. Uh, one unit negative y axis. Replace y with 3y, that is dilate by one third from x axis. And replace x 
with negative x that is reflect about y axis okay replace x with x minus 2 that was a minus just to be clear so that is translate two units positive x axis Okay, replace y with negative y that is reflect about x axis and then we replace y with y minus 2 that is translate two units positive y axis direction okay and if we read them side by side we have one unit negative y axis one unit negative y axis so I'm comparing the two methods, dilate by a factor of one third from x axis, dilate by one third from x axis, reflect about y axis, reflect about y axis, translate two units positive x axis, translate two units positive x axis, okay, and down to reflect about x axis, reflect about x axis, translate two units negative y axis direction, translate two units. What did I do? Placed y with y minus 2. So I've got negative, two units positive, and I've got two units negative. So since I've got a little mistake here, I need to find out which one I've made the mistake in. So wait, why? Oh yeah, I've misread this. See, I've made that common mistake. I've seen a minus. No, no, that is that does mean positive. Oh, there's an error way back here. Oh no, that was the minus sign coming across negative y plus two. See, sometimes trying to find your mistake when you're looking over already done work is really hard. Oh, it's way back here. Way back here, that's supposed to be a minus. So when we take the negative, that turns to positive, that turns to positive, so that turns to positive. Simple mistake. Okay, so two units positive y axis, two units positive y axis. Right here. So that was quite a long stream, quite a long video with some quite complex effort. Okay. If you're coming into this and watching this without having done all the practice from 7A, B, and C, then you've got no hope of following this because you need to be able to straight offhand be able to read transformations either when we're using the dash method so over here okay you're just reading off okay uh, if i go from a y to a negative y what does that mean well i need to be able to read straight away that that's actually reflecting about the x-axis and then if i add two to that well that means i'm di translating by two units in the positive x-axis you need to be able to read those things off 
Same, same over here if you're using the inspection method. You need to be able to read those items straight off. Okay, you need to be able to you need to memorize all the re replace methods you're allowed to do, and then go back and identify what do those replace methods actually mean. So that's it for the video. If you have questions, you can hit me up through Edmodo or when we're in class next together. Um, all the best, stay safe, and today is really actually quite nice and sunny out, so maybe get outside and enjoy some of the sun while you can.